For those who are unfamiliar, this is Kenneth Copeland. He runs a program called Flashpoint. It's on his Victory Network, which he owns and operates. Well, Flashpoint is like this far-right, pro-Trump TV show that's constantly towing the line for Trump. Anything Trump wants them to say, they say. And they've even had Trump on before. This is actually part two. If you haven't seen the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll give context if it's missing. So anyways, they get Copeland on to give a talk. In the last one, it was like he was stumbling around his words had no idea what was going on or what he was saying and every now and then he'd say something the crowd liked and they would clap and then he would drill home on that subject it's just bizarre to watch anyway he started down a QAnon path about george washington forming a covenant with new israel and god new israel being america before we get into it actually let me explain the belief system to you real quick this is shane vaughn he believes that trump is the messiah and what he's about to explain is what kenneth copeland is espousing here and it's the basis for the idea that trump is the messiah i'll explain as we go just give this a listen this is from early november 2021 yeah check this out this is a televangelist shane vaughn as we uh listen to this we are going to play some breath of the wild should be in the background shouldn't bother you too much Breath of the Wild, too. We're just going around getting some Korok seeds. And he wrote down, wow. we are going, he wrote a course, to New Israel, New Israel, New Israel. And when they He's talking about the founding fathers. He says the founding, he says basically George Washington was doing this. They came off the ship. They didn't plant an American flag. They planted the Christian flag mm -hmm. on the soil. They dedicated, George Washington knelt and prayed dedicated America where the Twin Towers stand or stood. That's where America came into covenant with Yahweh, with God, was where the Twin Towers stand. What? Like, this is completely made up. There is absolutely zero evidence of any of this, what he's saying here. But like I said, it's the basis for the claim that Donald Trump is the new Messiah, that he is the replacement Jesus, basically. I'll continue to explain as we go on. Just keep listening here. Wow. And that's something. That is where George Washington prayed, right? There's a chapel right outside the Twin Towers where George Washington, that picture of him praying by the horse, that's where it happened. I'll pop the picture up for anybody who's unfamiliar with it. Uh, this is completely made up, like all of it. The picture isn't even real. I mean, it's a real painting, but it's not of a real scene that really happened. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God, if you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. And he gave the nation to God at that point. Every signer that of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel. See, isn't that crazy? He believes that the signers of the Declaration of Independence were descendants of the tribes of Israel, a.k.a. they were Jews. He thinks they were Jews. He's about to explain how they got there. We can trace it. We know it. No, complete nonsense. And by the way, the reason they didn't plant a an American flag when they landed in America is because the American flag didn't exist yet. But OK. And here's the thing you've got to understand about Israel. Please tell me what I don't understand about Israel. Lay it on me, Shane. Most people think of Israel when you say the word Israel, they think of Jews. I was a doctor of theology. No, he wasn't. I was the youngest ordained evangelist in America at 14 years old. No, he wasn't. That was Marjo Gortner at four years old. But okay, go on. Wow. I've lived for the Lord my whole life. No, he was an insurance salesman for a while and defrauded a bunch of people and went to jail for like three years for stealing their social security number, taking out life insurance policies in their name, and then listing himself as a beneficiary when they died so no didn't live for the lord his whole life probably not living for the lord now he's living for that those fat stacks honestly and i was dumb as a box of rocks and that one i can believe know it at 40 years old because i thought that a jew meant israel and an israel meant jew until i started studying my bible and i found out that the first mention of the word jew in the bible is them fighting against Israel. 
Okay, I don't know what point he's getting at here. That doesn't really make much sense, but all right. Wow. When you come to... Wow, you hear this? ...understand that Israel is not Jews and Jews is not Israel. When you get that, here's what happens. All of a sudden, and I'll do it real fast, at one time, they were one nation. King Solomon died. King Jeroboam, King Rehoboam, there yeah. was a split. Yeah. Mm. The Jews, the tribe of Judah, stayed in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. They kept the Sabbath. That's why they're still identifiable. They kept the Sabbath. That kept them identifiable for these thousands of years. However, there was ten tribes that went to the north with King Rehoboam yeah. in rebellion. Because uh, there were a total of uh, 12 tribes of Israel, I believe. I think I said 13 last night when I was or on the previous part when I was doing this. But I, I believe that there are 12 tribes of Israel. So he, what he just did added up to 11 tribes. I'm not sure what he's talking about here. Those tribes crossed over the Caucasian Mountains. They were captivated by the Germans. They crossed over the Caucasian... Oh, I'm, are we out of time? Oh, anyway. So they crossed over. I'll make it real quick. <laughs> Where they wound up at was the Great British Isles because the prophecy was that they would go mm -hmm. to the Isles of the Sea. And from there, we find those tribes making their way to the United States Thanks. of America. Okay, so that's the basis of the claim that, that Donald Trump is the Messiah. In the Old Testament, the Son of Man is talked about as the Messiah. The Son of Man is the Messiah in the Old Testament. Like, that's how they referred to him in the old language. Because he's, like, going to be born of man, but he was going to be, like, God's messenger or God's whatever, right? So anyways, uh, the Son of Man was, according to the Old Testament, was supposed to come along and spark Armageddon into being, and uh, before doing so, he's supposed to take political control over the entire system. He's supposed to become like the president of Israel or whatever, and then spark Armageddon into being. And that was expected to be Jesus, but Jesus died. He never finished his work. He never did what the Son of Man was supposed to do. So the Christians at the time were like, uh, he'll be back. Yeah, yeah, he'll be back. We'll, we'll just wait for him to return to finish what he started. It makes no sense for Jesus to have been a prophet if he died, and he did. So anyways, the claim is that if America is new Israel, if it has a new covenant with God, and Trump took political control over new Israel, the claim is that Trump is the new Messiah. That's kind of how the belief system works. That's what Kenneth Copeland is espousing, or what he's about to espouse subtly. Complete delusion that these people live in, not just Copeland, but Shane Vaughn too. Just complete and total delusion. So with all of that in mind, listen to what Copeland had to say about George Washington. Okay, and remember, George Washington, the belief is that he was Jewish secretly, that he was of Jewish descent and capable of making a deal with God or whatever, making a, a covenant between God and new Israel, a.k.a. America. Washington invoked his oath and covenant unto the Lord and sealed it with, so help me God. He bowed his knee to the ground in reverence and kissed the Bible. Afterward, Washington called the senators and newly elected officials to join him. And Dude, he's not reading from the Bible. What is he reading from right now? Is this like some kind of a history book of some sort? And they walked arm in arm down the streets of New York City's chapel. There they bowed together, prayed, and dedicated this land, our beloved America, to God. The day that George Washington was inaugurated, this was the day covenant was invoked. America belonged to God Almighty. Oh, dude, this is fascinating. Oh, oh, okay, I have to write this down. I got to write this down. 50, 23. Give me a second here. I'm going to write this down. 50 minutes, 23 seconds into this thing. This is so clearly outlining the belief I'm honestly, like, usually they're a lot more coy about their belief system when it comes to this stuff. They won't come out and say 
this stuff because saying this means that they believe that Trump is the Messiah. If they believe that like this is new Israel or whatever, effectively it means Trump's the new Messiah. So it's kind of a big deal that he's saying this. Fascinating. And everybody's cheering for it. Are they aware of the implications, I wonder? Hallelujah! I mean, nothing that the dude just said added up to anything at all. He, his whole talk was nonsense. But he says... You know, this is new Israel. God has a covenant with America and it gets claps no matter what came before it or what comes after it. Now. He's wearing a stars and stripes jacket and the people in the audience are waving flags around like that is. Completely like there is no separation between church and state anymore for all intents and purposes they're the same thing at this point or that's what copeland is aiming for at the very least i pray for my partners every meal partners are are people who donate to him donators uh, of any amount all over the world But when I pray for this nation, I say, Lord, remember your covenant. So, Abram, who became Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel, Jesus. So, <laughs> and God is the author of this. The good God. Okay. So, it's God, Abram, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob became Israel. Dude, is he just like repeating himself right now? Sounds like it. Jesus and George. <laughs> right, so this is where, this was our opening clip. He called George Washington basically one of the prophets or one of the, the, the important people to history to God or whatever, right? And that lays foundation for Trump to be the Messiah. Here's the point. <clears throat> God, are we getting to the point finally? How many, we're 50 something minutes in now. We're getting to the point. Okay. First covenants count because everything else is based on that. The nation of Israel is based on what God said to Abraham. And the whole nation is based on it. This nation, particularly to Christian people, should be completely, totally based on what George Washington said to Jesus. Okay, and what did George Washington say to Jesus? The first act of Congress, number one, the first act of Congress was to enter covenant with the Almighty God based on the book of Genesis. Well, hang on now. I'm curious. What was the first act of Congress? The first act of Congress... 1789, I think, is when the uh, Constitution was ratified, but there was a Continental Congress before that. Um, oh, okay. So the first thing that was passed, the first bill, the Senate passed its first bill in 1789, May 5th. The Oath Act, the first oath for members and civil servants was very simple. 
I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That was the first act, actually, of Congress. Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Okay. Oh, is that what that is? KCBC? Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Now, the prayers that were prayed. Now, I have, I have these, these, these prayers. Some were prayed that day. There's one in here that, that was according to something like six years earlier, but they are the prayers of Washington. So listen to this. Okay, I don't know that we have any recorded copies of any prayers that George Washington gave. That sounds pretty far-fetched to me. I know Washington was not like a particularly religious person to my knowledge, but okay, um, I suppose I will bear with him. Go ahead. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer that thou will keep the United States in holy protection. Thou will incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government. And entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, particularly for their brethren who have served in the field. And finally, that thou will most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to do justice, to love mercy, to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific, pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion. And without a humble imitation of those examples and those things, we never hope to be a happy nation. Grant our supplication, we beseech thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why not pray that in church? Because I don't feel like that makes much sense. I I'm not sure what he's trying to communicate. Did Is that even like one of Washington's prayers? Honestly, I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Do we even have any of, wa of George Washington's prayers? I have no clue. I, I'm very skeptical. We could set ourselves in agreement with that when you pray for the nation. The first president prayed that. Mm. And now, Almighty Father, if it is thy holy will that we shall obtain a place and a name among the nations of the earth, grant that we may be able to show our gratitude for your goodness by our endeavors to fear and obey thee. Bless us with thy wisdom in our councils, success in battle, that our victories be tempered with humanity. Endow also our enemies with enlightened minds that they may become sensible of their injustice, willing to restore our liberty and peace. Grant the petition of thy servant for the sake of whom thou hast called, thy beloved son. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Okay, I don't know what any of that means, except I did capture uh, one little thing in there. Did you guys notice him pray for, like, a swift death to their enemies, basically? How psychotic is it to pray for, like, your victory in a war? Seriously. You're praying to God to allow you to, like, kill other people. What? I mean, I don't even know if this is, like, Washington's prayer. This could be completely made up, but... Either way, that is psychotic. That, there's another note. Very interesting. When Ronald Reagan took the oath of office, he turned it to the 17th chapter of Genesis. Again, don't believe a word out of his mouth. Kenneth Copeland basically lies for a living completely untrustworthy person, so be skeptical about everything. But, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm just satisfied knowing him. He got it from George Washington. He got it from George Washington. First president, first Congress, first covenant, first act of government. Yeah, completely made up. First act of government was the Oath Act. Was to enter into a divine covenant with the Almighty God. Genesis 6, 3, 
the days of man shall be 120 years. So you come down to Psalm 91 with long life. Well, we don't have any right to just pick what long life is because God said it was 120 years, not 70 or 80. So then all the food laws are based on 120 years. Right. So um, Copeland claims that he's going to live to be 120 years old because he's eating the way that the Bible tells people to eat. And uh, he even knows the day he's going to die, December 26th or whatever, 2053 or whatever it is. It's just absurd, dude. Absurd on every level. Okay, let's keep listening to him try to convince people that he knows the day he's going to die in when he's 120. I think he's 86 right now. That's the way this book works. So our nation began with an act of obedience to the written word of the living God and the first president and the first Congress. All the elected officials went to the chapel right there in New York City, and now 9-11, it's the only thing that stood, and it became a harbor for the, for the wounded. Okay, they're talking about St. Paul's Chapel. There is a chapel there next to the World Trade Center uh, towers where they used to stand. No, there were other buildings around that stood. In fact, I think there were a total of three buildings that fell. Do you have any idea how many uh, high-rises there are in Manhattan? A whole heck of a heap. That's how many. There are over, there are over 6,000 high-rise buildings, 274 of which are skyscrapers. A high-rise is up to 34 stories. A skyscraper is above 34 stories, basically. I think a mid-rise is 16 stories and a low-rise is 5, I believe. I don't really remember what the exact numbers are. Anyway, there were a lot of skyscrapers that stood on 9-11. It was only three that fell, I believe. Or two or three, I, I don't know. The reason he's saying this, because he's desperate to convince people that the World Trade Center location was special because it was where George Washington dedicated the country to God or whatever. You see, the interesting thing is none of what he just said connects to the rest of his talk in any way. And people are just clapping for this. Hallelujah. And our country was born and in my opinion, right now, it's being born again. It's reaching, pulling towards you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I believe, it would, I believe it would be good if we would stand and just give God praise for that and thank Him for it and reprogram our thinking back to that first day. Reprogram our thinking back to the first day. Interesting. April of 30th, 1789. Oh, we could put it this way. We just put our minds back 15 minutes. That was 15 minutes ago with God. And I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied in my heart that he's been waiting for somebody to remind him of this covenant. What, is he saying that God was waiting for somebody to remind God of the covenant that he had? What a bizarre way to view things, right? Is it just me? so that he can act, so that he can remember all of the other covenants that he's made with you and with me and all of the rest of us. Because God doesn't remember covenants by default, right? He has to be reminded of the covenants that he agrees to. There's been times I've gone before the Lord and we needed all kinds of financial things. I just say, Lord, I, I remind you of your covenant. Praise God. I'm the seed of Abraham, and I'm supposed to have more than enough money to do this. Oh, and he's a prosperity gospel believer, which means that according to his theology, 
All he has to do is believe. And if he loves God enough, God will give him the money that he needs. That's it. And if he doesn't have the money that he needs, it's because he doesn't love God enough. Or the, the mo- I'm sorry, not the money he needs. The money that he wants. If he doesn't have all the money in the world that he wants, it's because he doesn't love God enough. Really, that's prosperity gospel in a nutshell. I have a covenant with you. You had to remind God of the covenant of prosperity gospel because he wasn't getting rich. And the only explanation is that God forgot about the covenant. So he had to remind God of the covenant. Is this making sense to anybody else? I have a household covenant with him. I have a family covenant with him. And we talk covenant a lot. I have a health covenant with him. Amen. Amen. And he gets me cool jackets. (laughs) And but there but there are things that happen that it just kind of puts me over it in some place that I I really didn't try to be there. The Lord just put me over into these different places. I'm sorry, what? Is he saying that that's why he's drifting and going to different subjects in this talk? Because God just pulls his attention away or something? That property there at Eagle Mountain Lake, the United States government built it. So the United States government... I'm sorry, hang on. Let me step back. Listen to that again. What was it he said? Put me over into these different places. That property there at Eagle Mountain Lake. I, Mountain Lake, I guess that's where he lives? The United States government built it. So the United States government dug the water wells. Our water wells are between six and 700 feet deep. We don't have a water problem. That is crazy deep. Yeah, he must be talking about his house. I guess he he bought the house from, like, the the U.S. government or something? I'm not sure what he's talking about. I know that he has, like, a ton of natural gas wells on his property, and that's made him filthy, filthy rich. It wasn't originally, uh, like, the gas wells were not originally, I'm sorry, he didn't originally own property with uh, natural gas wells. It wasn't like, oh, he bought this property and they just so happened to have natural gas and that, that's how he got rich. No. He got rich because he bought, after already being filthy rich, he bought this property with natural gas wells on it. And the natural gas coming out of the ground operates our electrical generators and we don't have any electricity bills. Yeah, again, like this isn't because God blessed him. This is because he specifically purchased this stuff after getting filthy rich off of your money that you gave him or your grandma. I mean, I don't know if you donate to him, but the money that your grandma gave him Seriously. It, it's just, it's disgusting, dude. And he uses this as the basis for the claim that he has some special covenant with God. I'm rich, and that means prosperity gospel is real. Oop, the Lionel fell. Prosperity gospel is real. That God really will whatever. He really will give you a ton of money if you donate or whatever other thing. It's a complicated belief system. It's stupid. We don't have any electricity bills. Yeah. <laughs> glory to God. No, that's glory to your accountant and intelligent business decisions. That's not glory to God. We praise the God of this nation. You saved this place. 
And here it sits between two oceans like a jewel, like a diamond that's been thrown across a world of... I'm, I'm sorry? It's like a what? A diamond that's been thrown across a what? Thrown across a world of coal. Uh, okay, a diamond thrown across a world of coal. Uh, I don't think I really understand what he's talking about here. There is a connection between diamond and coal, but is this just complete nonsense? Is it just me? And we are so grateful. The people in this country are not trying to get out. All people all over the world are trying their best to get in here. They well, that's not necessarily true. Um, well, I guess he's about to touch on the refugee situation now. There are a bunch of refugees that are trying to get into the United States desperately. You know, refugees are trying to get into the U.S. because they're coming from war-torn areas, right? I mean, granted, there are a whole bunch of immigrants who are trying to get into like legitimate honest to god immigrants who are not refugees there's plenty of that too but a lot of the people coming over the border it, you know uh the u.s mexico border are refugees people coming from war-torn areas that honestly we we might have caused that war-torn damage they know it's special but Father, we praise you and we thank you for saving it for us. And we worship you in it. And we bless you in the name that's above every name that's named. <clears throat> Did he say he blesses God? Is it possible for humans to bless God. I thought God blesses other people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, is that a prayer? I, I, it's so hard to tell, like, what this dude is doing and where he's going with everything. It's like constant nonsense with him. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you reckon that jacket would fit me? No. Okay. No. Thank you. Wow, dude. Either Kenneth Copeland is really, really short, or this guy, Gene Bailey, is really, really tall. Or both, I suppose. Alexa, how tall is Kenneth Copeland? Apparently, he's 1.69 tall. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. That was very helpful. I, I assume that means 1.69 meters, right? I'm going to have to look this up, aren't I? Okay. How tall is Kenneth Copeland? 1.69 meters. Okay. Five foot six, basically. Five foot six, five foot seven, somewhere in that range. Wow, that is actually very short. That's about as tall as Greg Locke is also, interestingly enough. That's actually really interesting. <laughs> so uh, Gene Bailey, as it turns out, is very, very short. Uh, I'm sorry, Gene Bailey is very, very tall, is what I meant to say. Thank you, sir, for coming here. You don't know how much it means to us. Would you tell him again what you think of Brother Copeland? Dude, look at this guy with this wicked mustache. I could only live to dream of having a mustache like that. That is one bad motherfucker of a mustache right there. I didn't even have to circle it with my mouse because everybody knew exactly which mustache I was talking about. That is a wicked cool mustache right there. just unglued from reality dude let me know what you think about this in the comments i think copeland there's just something not quite right about copeland uh, that, that clip all ago with, with pat 
uh, we just we celebrated our 40th anniversary in in South Africa, and. Uh, why would you celebrate your anniversary in South Africa of all places? Uh, and we, but then last week, we celebrated our 40th anniversary in Great Britain. So we were able there to see a lot of our roots. And, and, and I, my, my greeting was greetings from the colonies. That's and right. we, 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 we enjoy that. But to go there and witness those governments That's right. and come here and witness this one. But coming back home, instead of coming nonstop. That's what she said. To Fort Worth. Dude, I couldn't have lined that up more perfectly. Is it just me? Nericle, if God sneezes, who blesses him? It's a good question. And the answer is God, of course. God blesses God, apparently, according to Kenneth Copeland, at least. Instead of coming nonstop to Fort Worth, we landed in Norfolk, Virginia. And I had a few minutes with that. And I walked in there, <laughs> and he grabbed me by my coat. He pulled me up, and he, 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 he's just talking. And, and so I know. Dude, what is he talking about? Who? Who did this? Is, is it God that did this? I don't understand. You're, you're not making any sense. Do you know where you are right now? Just talking, and, and so I anointed him with oil, and we just had a wonderful time together. And uh, I don't know who he's talking about right now. I asked him a favor. I said, when you when you go over the other side, uh, after you talk to Dee Dee, of course, would you say hi to my mom and dad? Is he talking about Pat Robertson? Because Pat Robertson died not long before this came out. Well, of course he answered yes, but I doubt if he's got anything like that on his mind. I agree. Because he is part of the great cloud of witnesses. Amen. <laughs> you take the, the days, 260 days a year, <clears throat> an invitation every day. Okay, there are 365 days a year. Aren't there 260 work days in a year? What is this guy talking about? Like, his mind is seriously gone, it seems to me. <clears throat> an invitation every day. Five days. That's 14,850 days. That's a lot. You can't tell how many people answered that invitation. Then there's Superbook. Dude, what is he talking about? I am so lost. I have no clue what he's going on about right now. Seriously. I honestly, I'm not saying this to be facetious. I think the guy's mind is gone. I think the dude has just lost it completely. Then there's Operation Blessing. The legacy of that ministry is incalculable. Yeah, Operation Blessing was something that Pat Robertson was running. So I guess he was talking about Pat Robertson. I don't feel like there's like any jump into that. Did he even tell us he's talking about Pat Robertson? How would anybody have known? if I didn't know Pat Robertson's ministry backward and forward because I follow this stuff like a hawk. That's right. You cannot calculate it. And I think we need to give the Lord another praise. Praise Amen. God. I, I, I'm, just, I'm so blessed to have spent a few moments with him. Amen. Amen. What a man of God. 
I'm, I'm very interested now. I'm very interested now to see what the team has to say about these covenants and yes, sir, and these men of God and, and get their reaction to it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth Copeland, everybody. Okay, this dude made no sense. How could he have possibly gotten famous for his preaching? How did he become a televangelist? This guy makes no sense at all. None. Dude, he just, he needs to close up shop, find some hobbies, and just live out the rest of his days till he meets God in heaven or whatever. Because this is just, this was bad. This was just a nonsensical bad talk that he gave. I don't know what else to call it. Just jumping from subject to subject and not even telling us what the new subject is, just, just talking about it. Randomly jumping in, oh, yeah, I loved that guy. Yeah, he's gone now, but I loved him so much. Who? Who? Who are we talking about now? That was crazy, dude. Let me know what you think.